So without further ado, um, I would like to introduce uh, our presenters for today. Uh, Rick Malloy is Water Conservation Manager at Central Utah Water Conservancy District, who works with state and local water agency to develop water conservation strategy and public outreach tool. The other presenter for today is Jack. Jack is the Water Conservation Coordinator for Central Utah Water Conservancy District, responsible for managing uh, the district's online presence, overseeing the district's marketing efforts, and aiding in the administration of water conservation program, both commercial and residential. Great, thanks. We'll go ahead and share our screen here. Awesome. So um, just a little bit of background. Um, so I'm Rick, and to my left, I guess you're right, would be Zach. And uh, this is our, our boundaries. So you can see down in the bottom right, that's the state of Utah. We cover a very large area. The majority of the population uh, of Utah is, is served or is in our service area, Salt Lake and Utah County, if you're familiar with, with Utah, uh, is, is where the majority of the population lives. And so, uh, large service area, we are a wholesale water provider, so we um, provide water through uh, mainly a series of uh, open channels and tunnels, and um, we maintain uh, several reservoirs throughout the state and also deliver uh, Colorado River uh, basin water uh, to the Wasatch Front or to the Salt Lake and Utah County areas as well. So. A lot of things. We also um, have hydro uh, power generation facilities as well that we, we maintain as a district. Uh, but what I want to talk a little bit about today is starting off is um, kind of our water conservation efforts at um, Central Utah Water. Uh, a couple of years ago, we set out and implemented a new water conservation and efficiency plan. You can see this is dated October 28th. Uh, we set out a lot of goals and um, put a lot of things in motion uh, to get us kind of where we're at today and, and to see us over the next couple of years. And we have been rapidly working through uh, a lot of what we've outlined in our plan. Um, we have looked at kind of the needs throughout the state and what uh, what we need to do to ensure a reliable water supply, uh, specifically regarding conservation. And we estimate that uh, as a state, we need to spend about $2 billion by 2030 and an additional $7.4 billion by 2070. Just in, in, this is just in conservation spending to make sure that we uh, meet our goals, our water uh, delivery goals throughout the state uh, and continue to grow with the with the population growth that we we've been seeing. Uh, so this, you know, a lot of people see these numbers and and this is, you know, probably more aligned with what people might see as large development projects. Uh, and we consider conservation to be uh, similar to, you know, development. Uh, and the reason why we do it, you can see this, this chart here. Um, with our current demand from 2020, if we maintained that same demand with population growth, uh, we would run out of water roughly uh, in 2040. Uh, but we are very optimistic and we feel confident that we'll be able to conserve and follow the trajectory of that green line and we'll bring our, our water use down. And, and continue to stay within that, uh, that reliable supply. Now, a couple of things I wanna point out, there's that potential future supply. That is primarily focused on conversion from agriculture to municipal and industrial waters. So we say potential because we don't, we're not necessarily advocating for the conversion of agriculture uh, and, and more often than not, the residents in our service area would like to see local agriculture maintained. And so we don't necessarily consider that as a, as a concrete future water supply. Uh, you'll also notice that the existing reliable supply trends downward. And the reason for that uh, is I think on the next slide, well, not the next slide, but we'll go into that in just a second. Um, 
we have done a lot of conservation. Uh, the things that we're doing now uh, might, or that we're gonna talk about today might be new to us or new to the state, um, but we've been doing conservation for a long time. Um, our efforts that uh, we've been implementing over the last uh, decade or more have saved over 1.4 million acre feet of water from 2009 to 2019. So we've done a, we've done a lot and we're gonna continue to do more uh, because it's critical. Uh, we do have uh, some regional goals that were in, uh, put out by the state. And this is what we kind of adhere to as, as district goals as well. You can see um, the majority of our service area kind of falls in the Salt Lake, the Provo River and the Green River area. Uh, you can see that ranges from an 11% reduction all the way up to almost a 20% reduction in use. And um, again, that's where those that massive amount of investment comes into play uh, to make sure that we meet those needs. Um, but as a whole, a 16% reduction. Um, and I do wanna make a couple notes. We do measure in gallons per capita per day. Um, this is, you know, you know, we hear that number used throughout the country and the way that, uh, that we calculate that number is all use. And so it is, it probably seems high, um, but we don't subtract any return flows. Uh, we, it's not just depletion. We also include all of our outdoor irrigation uh, for like home landscapes and every, everything is included into that, into that number. But our, like I said, our goal uh, that we want to see by 2030 is, um, you know, at least a 20% reduction. And we're on track to, to get there. Uh, as a district, we have uh, goals as well. Um, our first goal is to use our own water efficiently, but because we're a wholesale um, supplier, we, you know, there's not a ton of efficiencies that can be gained in a pipe outside of maybe some water loss. And so we, uh, we focus on that, but it, uh, certainly that's not where the main, uh, the main conservation efforts are happening. Uh, we also support water retailers efforts. That's where the end use is happening and that's where there's a lot of potential. And then we also have a lot of public programs uh, that, we, that we are involved in as well. Um, so why the programs uh, or why do we choose the programs that, um, that we do? And a lot of it's based on this chart uh, these two charts here. So right now for municipal and industrial water use that's diverted, 44% uh, of that use is outdoor residential. Uh, we are notorious, I think, in Utah for pointing fingers at everybody else. Uh, you know, we often say, well, the school across the street uses more water than everybody else combined or whatever ridiculous things people say. Uh, but the reality is, is that 44% is outdoor residential. Uh, outdoor commercial is probably 2 to 3%. Uh, outdoor institutional is even less. And outdoor industrial is almost non-existent. Uh, so again, the lion's share is with residential. And the, the chart on the right, you can see the reason for that is there's a lot of overwatering happening. Uh, the typical water applied could, I mean, easily exceeds 50 inches a year. And if you look at ET and water needs, it's somewhere around 30 inches of water a season. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity there um, that we can capitalize on. And, and we focus a lot on um, uh, improvements to the landscapes. And you can see we, we have a, a local scapes program, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, you know, you can see there's a significant amount of reduction from going from a traditional landscape to something that's more water efficient. Uh, and I talked about that declining uh, water supply. Well, this is why it's a declining water supply. We, uh, we know that there's climate change occurring, uh, increased temperatures, uh, lengthened irrigation season, higher ET, all uh, a 
equates to a higher outdoor demand. And you can see what that demand looks like on the left. Uh, it all comes in, in those few short months from May to October. Uh, of course, this doesn't come as a surprise to anybody else, but it's important to know that we have to plan on uh, additional supplies just to meet even existing needs without growing and uh, just related to uh, climate change, climate variability. Um, so, so I just want to just touch on briefly some of the programs uh, that we have. Um, we have for several, well, quite a few years have done smart controller rebates and toilet rebates. They're all funneled through Utah Water Savers. These are statewide. Uh, doesn't matter where you live, you, you uh, are, have the ability to apply for these rebates. Um, but then as a district, we implemented some new rebates uh, for just our service area last year. And one is flip your strip. And that's where, uh, you know, the small turf strip between the sidewalk and the street, just like in the picture, uh, we incentivize uh, conversion for, of those landscapes. And, and we feel like this is a good, easy starting area for people to uh, change their, change out their turf and put in something that's more water efficient. Uh, and there's a lot of benefits for doing that. Um, one, you know, you, you lose a lot of water in these narrow strips. Irrigation equipment was never really designed well to irrigate small strips of grass. And so um, I'm sure anybody that has one of these park strips will know that uh, it's nearly impossible to keep your water from running down the gutter or watering the sidewalk and, um, and keep your lawn looking healthy. So right now we pay between a dollar to a dollar 25 per square foot of lawn. And, and I can say very confidently that that amount will continue to increase as our needs increase uh, to remove that, that turf. We also do require as part of these um, replacements that they do replace it with uh, vegetation. We don't wanna see just concrete or rock Throughout there, we want to see um, plants put back in and trees, and we think that that's uh, an important part of turf removal is, is continuing to replace it with something. So you still get cooling and, and uh, biodiversity benefits of having uh, other vegetation in, in these areas. Um, the other program we have is local scapes rewards. And without getting too much into it, because there's a video that I will tease later that kind of talks about local scapes, but um, we, as I'm sure many of you get frustrated when people call a, a zero scape, a zero scape. <laughs> and so in order to get away from that, we tried to coin a new term uh, that was uh, actually developed at Jordan Valley Water Conservancy District. And many of you uh, are familiar with this program and know the, the founders of it, um, but it was a great implementation of uh, how to where design and functionality meet to uh, save water, but really have something that's more aesthetically pleasing and works for Utah. Our climate um, is different and we, you know, lawn does grow really well here. We're not uh, trying to remove it from every uh, corner uh, of our landscape, but rather put it into the most practical location possible. And so you can see this picture is a great example of what would be considered a local scape and would uh, use a lot less water and uh, specifically waste a lot less water. And so uh, we do have a rewards program for both new construction, as well as people that want to retrofit their landscape. Um, they can get paid uh, an incentive to, to do this, this process. I, really, um, I yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but can you move your mouse cursor so that the zoom drop down is gone? Yes, just somewhere out of the thing. Yeah, you see this drop down. Sometimes it's blocking your text. So anyway, yeah, if you move it away, I think it should go. Did it go away? Uh, it will take a while, but okay. Sorry to disturb you. Keep on. Oh, you're, you're just fine. Um, okay, well, that's good um, spot. I'm mean, now going to pass it over to Zach, who's going to talk about. Um, so once we've once we kind of developed these programs, we knew through um, 
our past efforts that we really needed to develop uh, a marketing effort for the district, as well as for our conservation campaigns, um, our new programs. We needed to get information out there. And uh, quite frankly, the government is not always really good at conveying information. And so we tried to take some new approaches and we knew that video in a social world is king. And so we developed some new videos that we felt like would uh, help our efforts out uh, in a way that we probably couldn't do otherwise. And so I'll turn it over to Zach, who's our social media and marketing guru <laughs> and everything else. And so he'll kind of walk you through um, kind of the process of of where we started, where we went to, and then we'll wrap up with kind of what we're seeing for the future. Cool. Thanks, Rick. Uh, nice to be here, everybody. Uh, that was a good segue into what we're going to talk about now, our new district videos. So to start off, uh, I wanted to touch on the why, and Rick mentioned a little bit of about it just barely. Um, there was a couple of different reasons why we thought video would be a good fit for pushing or um, passing this message about water conservation along and why we went that avenue. The first one was there is undeniably some major shifts in consumer behavior uh, over the past couple of years. The biggest impact or um, pressure that kind of uh, caused those changes or those shifts was obviously the pandemic that continues to, to affect us to this day. Um, the way people got their news, the amount of people that jumped on social media, and other platforms to get information increased significantly. Uh, so we knew that that was gonna be a big factor. Uh, another factor is, as Rick touched on earlier, Utah remains to be one of the fastest growing states in the nation. Um, a large portion of that increase is coming from the children, grandchildren, uh, individuals deciding to stay within the state um, once they reach adulthood uh, and making their, their families here and not taking them elsewhere. But in addition, there have been other groups of people finding Utah and its recreational benefits and other great uh, parts about the state desirable and have moved here. Um, so that's another one of the big factors of why we thought it would be important is to spread the information to new homeowners, whether they, whether they have lived here their whole lives or are just coming here. And then another one was uh, the drought uh, was pretty intense here last year in the state of Utah and continues to affect us uh, here today. In addition to that, um, our leadership executive, uh, our general manager was recently appointed as the Colorado River Commissioner of Utah, which brought new light to the district and kind of pushed us into the spotlight a little bit and some news media attention we got and so we thought that it would be important to kind of uh, control our narrative, which I'll touch on in a moment. So the purpose of these videos, as I touched on just barely, was to control our narrative. We were kind of getting annoyed and tired that media groups or other people with uh, special interests were interpreting our story and passing maybe false information or wrong or twisting our words or shedding a bad light on the district. So we wanted to control our narrative through content and specifically through video content. Uh, we wanted to highlight the great people here at the district, who we are and what we do. Um, I've only been here for about a year and a half and I've met some of the most amazing people probably in my whole life. They're dedicated, they're hardworking and they care about the residents of Utah and they care about uh, making sure that everybody has uh, a clean, reliable source of water to their homes. And uh, last but not least, we wanted to market our water conservation programs and efforts to the public there. Um, that, that's a picture of our conservation team and seasonal staff at a, uh, a flip blitz, which is where we got to convert park strips for some lucky homeowners that met certain criteria. It was a great uh, opportunity and a great event that we got to participate in. So, in this whole process, we decided that there were kind of four categories that we wanted to focus on. And you'll see these four categories and you'll also see that some of these videos uh, we submitted for awards or recognition and you'll see some of those icons as they pop up. So uh, we wanted to talk about the district. We made three individual videos to basically introduce who we are, what we do. Um, and we'll show one of those videos here shortly. Uh, next, we wanted to touch on our conservation programs and educate uh, people, the public, about how they can conserve water 
on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the Colorado River is a hot topic right now in the West and continues to be and will be for the future. Um, so we wanted to make sure that there was accurate information about um, what the district is doing uh, in relation to the Colorado River. And last but not least, we had some educational videos that show up in K through 12 schools and uh, introduce water and water conservation uh, at that level. So I'm hoping this works, but we've got some videos that we want to share with you guys. So we're going to just play these. That's all right. You know, we've always wanted the best for you. We wanted you to stay healthy and be happy. We wanted a future for you. Don't forget the flesh, baby. It's funny because, in a way, your future is kind of our future. And we wanted it to be the best future possible. Everything we did then was for now. It was for you. Even if things don't go as planned. You can always count on us to be there for you. Baby girl. So that one's kind of like the feel good video introducing the district and the important work that uh, the members of our organization do every day. This next one is talking about the Colorado River and the importance of that river for not only us in here in Utah, but for the entire uh, Colorado River Basin. Here's a question. What does humpback chub have in common with a cow on a Wyoming ranch? How about a uh, farm in California and the Grammy Dam in Colorado, or a family living in Provo and a boating trip to Lake Powell? They might seem disconnected, but they all have something in common, something very important, the Colorado River. In fact, a quarter of the United States economy, seven states and over 40 million people depend on this river. It is the reason we can live out here in the West. In a way, we are all one community bound together by this water. We need it and we need each other. So who are these people in our Colorado River community? We live in cities as far away as Los Angeles or Albuquerque. We're in small towns up in the Rocky Mountains or down in the Sonoran Desert. When we fill up a glass of water, chances are we're drinking from the same river. That water is our life. This is how we grow crops in the desert where it rarely rains. It's how we stock our supermarkets year round. Stable agriculture needs access to water. Our source for irrigation in the West, the Colorado River. We also depend on the flow of water for a whole lot more. There are hundreds of hydroelectric generators along the Colorado River generating electricity without burning fossil fuel, all while providing jobs and empowering our economies. We also count on the river for recreation, outdoor activities like rafting, fishing, and boating, all industries that support local economies and enhance our quality of life. These activities help us fall in love with the natural environment we call home. But it's not just a home for us. We know that the river's natural ecosystem is important too. What's good for a river is good for its people. Clean, healthy water. When a native species is struggling, it's a warning sign that the river needs our help. And when we protect these natural environments, we all gain the benefit. We are all part of an extraordinary ecosystem, a community near its banks or far away. We all rely on the river in one way or another. That's why the Central Utah Water Conservancy District is proud to cooperate with other states and agencies to manage the Colorado River, because we all depend on this water together. All right, and 
we're going to show two more. So hopefully that's okay. Uh, Rick kind of hinted to this one, but this next one is uh, talking about the local scapes program. And it's just kind of uh, an edutainment, if you will, um, piece of content that helps educate, but offers some entertainment. So hope you guys enjoy. Suburban legend says there are three types in every neighborhood. Type one, garden of weed. Your yard is a lush, flawless paradise that makes the neighbors green with envy. <laughs> well, almost. Things are always greener on your side of the fence. Type 2. It ain't easy being green. You water so that the grass grows, but growth requires mowing. Turn your back for just a moment and you've got Jumanji. You're exhausted, but soldier on. Type 3. Pain in the grass. It can happen to anyone when the physical, mental, and financial toll of landscaping grows too high. You snap, giving up your hashtag grass goals for hashtag lawn care don't care. Or worse. But whatever your type, common or uncommon, there's one guaranteed way to take your yard to the next level. Localscapes. Localscapes is a free guide to help transform your yard into a field of dreams. Designed to save you money, time, work, and water. Yes, you'll eliminate hours of outdoor chores and thousands of gallons of water waste. Yes, you'll suddenly want to throw glamorous backyard parties. And yes, it really is as easy as going to localscapes.com for powerful planning tools, customizable help, and local classes. All free to you. Save green. Stay green. Go green. Localscapes. And last but not least, we might be a little bit biased. Uh, this is my favorite video, but I believe it's Rick's favorite too. This is called Don't Eat the Kool-Aid. So we'll go ahead and share that one with you, another water conservation uh, video that we produced. Oh, what up, scrawny? Your party's not for a few more hours. Yeah, so yeah. Like... I'm sorry, who are you? You're me from the future. That took you less time than I thought. What happened to you, me? Do we forget how to bathe? Oh, well, we really are our own worst critics. It's the future, man. We have dry shampoo. Trust me, nobody bathes. There's not enough water. Wait, what? Wait, what do you mean there's not enough water? Oh, are those water balloons? I haven't seen one of these in years. You past people are wimps. In the future, we fill these up with sand. Real game changer. One of our kids actually got a concussion that way. <laughs> She's fine. Are you telling me there's no water? <sighs> I shouldn't have said anything. Look, don't worry about water. It's no biggie. Once you try this, you never go back. Where did it all go? You live in a desert. What, did you think Tippinogos was a freshwater glacier? <laughs> By 2060, the population of Utah is double what it is now. So there's no washing, no swimming, no grass. You think football's hard to watch now? Where do you see it without a field? Oh, what a nightmare. Nah, I'm kidding. There's no football or sports. Look, we can't have people running around sweating, right? That would be a health hazard. It's not as bad as it sounds. You learn to adapt. Although I do miss Michael Day. I can't let this happen. So take me back in time to whenever I can save the water supply. Well, you could save thousands of gallons of water this summer by simply picking one more day of the week to keep your sprinklers off. Yeah, literally, one day. But we both know you're not gonna change, which is fine, because I like the future like it is. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, don't mess with the timeline! <sighs> it's watered down. All right, so hopefully you found those a little bit enjoyable, a little different than the normal webinar and stuff that we get to see. Um, you're more than welcome to with this QR code scan it and it'll take you to our YouTube channel where you can check out the rest of the videos that we had uh, produced last year. Um, there's some other great ones out there. I just wanted to share with you a couple of them given the uh, platform obviously talk about uh, conservation. So uh, moving on, I wanted to touch on a marketing campaign that we recently ran with those videos. 
Um, and basically, here's a little quote that I really like that talks about the importance of marketing. And it's, uh, marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories that you tell. And I feel that the uh, video production firm that we went with for these videos did a really good job of telling stories um, through video and through the scripts that they brought to the table. Uh, they were really great to work with and I uh, just really loved that quote. Um, so on to our conservation campaign. Uh, we just barely ended it actually at the end of June. So we started May 1st and ended June 30th. Uh, we decided basically on a budget of $10,000 um, for those two months because we had run a previous campaign um, for about $5,000 and felt that we needed a little bit of an additional budget to push the messaging. Um, our goals there are laid out. Uh, we wanted to increase water conservation programs awareness. We wanted to get people talking about water conservation, basically looking at the engagement on the, the ads themselves. And we wanted to increase our website traffic uh, by about 10%. The platforms that we chose were YouTube and Facebook. Hi, Jack. Uh, sorry to keep you, bother you again. Can you click on the more three dot and see if we can hide that? Let's try it. So hide floating meeting controls below that. Boom. Boom. Sorry about that. No problem. Perfect. Uh, moving on. So we'll just talk on about the results that we had from this two month campaign. Um, if that's all right. Let's try this. There we go. So here's the results at a glance. Uh, for that $10,000, we had our ads served about a uh, million two hundred thousand times, which is fantastic, um, and covered our service service area very well, uh, which is kind of the region that we were targeting. Uh, we ended up spending less than our campaign budget, so that's always a win, um, and that's basically the only reason that I'm kept on the team is that I can continue to not spend our entire budget. Um, many of our key performance indicators, which you'll see later on in the slides, I refer to them as KPIs, were better than industry benchmarks, and we got a lot of engagement. We were extremely um, surprised and happy with the results. So we're going to jump into, this is the, the uh, Facebook ads manager interface. I took a screenshot of it, and we're going to just look at the KPIs that we were looking at, which are the click-through rate, which is essentially the number of clicks that your ads get divided by the impressions. And you can see it located over there. Um, it basically just shows out of how many times were your, the clicks divided by impressions. I think I mentioned that earlier, but um, industry average is about 0.90%. We were hovering right around two. So we were well over the average. And our cost per click, um, as you can see in the next column there was also below the average, which is another great sign that these ads were relevant. People were interacting with them and they found them, the content uh, entertaining. Jumping over to now the YouTube um, ads platform, which is through Google. Um, the KPIs that we wanted to look at here were very similar. We're gonna look at the click through right here. On average is about 0.65. That's across all YouTube ads, all industries. For government specifically is about 0.07, which we were hovering right around there, which is great. We were happy with that. Um, the cost per click was slightly higher, if not two times as much. I'm not super worried about that um, because of the number of impressions that we got through this campaign. As you can see on the far left there, we had over 400,000 for one ad and about 400,000 for the other, roughly about 800,000 impressions, which is fantastic. That's the number of times that your ads were served. Um, we also wanted to look at the cost per view, um, two cents per view, which is below the average. And then finally, we wanted to look at the view rate for uh, YouTube is generally speaking 31.9% and for government is 29.6%. So roughly about two times the industry benchmark, which is fantastic. Uh, a view uh, in YouTube's eyes is watching it for 30 seconds or more. So um, if you're familiar with YouTube ads, you basically after six seconds can decide if you wanna skip the ad, uh, but you no matter what get that six seconds of content, they have to watch it for six seconds. So this is showing us that pretty much half of all people that were shown the ad viewed it for at least 30 seconds or more, which is fantastic in my opinion. And I told you that I, I didn't spend the campaign budget. I saved us about $3. So that's a win in my book. Um, thank you, Facebook. And thank you, YouTube, for helping me out with that. 
Um, did we achieve our goals? So on the top, you'll see there uh, our goals um, as the title. And uh, in, we wanted to increase the water conservation programs awareness. So as a result of this campaign running, we had an increase in not only phone calls about the programs, um, about emails, people stopping in our office, texts. There was a, you know, a noticeable increase in the inquiries about the programs, not all directly related to the marketing program. I mean, we're in the heat of the summer. People are wanting to, to make those landscape changes to conserve water due to the drought and other situations as well. So it can't take all the credit there, but we did see a noticeable increase in the inquiries there. Um, you'll notice that there was a 769% increase in applications for the flip your strip program and a 249 percent increase for the local scapes that's statewide so across all entities not just ours but i think that is phenomenal to see that much of an increase residents taking the the change the plunge to make those landscape changes and show interest in water conservation in their outdoor water use and then we wanted to increase our class attendance so we teach a landscaping classes pretty much uh, multiple times a week through the growing, excuse me, multiple times a month through the growing season. And this year was particularly special because we broke our record in the spring uh, two weeks in a row. So 180 was our record. And we broke it by one person on the 16th, and we broke it again on the 19th. And then jumping down into April, we broke it by over 100 again. But the one that we're most excited about was recent in June when we broke it by over 100. And that is specifically a landscaping class pertaining to our rebate program, uh, the Flip Your Strip. So we were extremely happy with that. And uh, we continue to see a lot of people showing interest in our um, classes, our landscaping classes. Another goal was to get people talking about water conservation. And I know that probably a lot of people are worried when you put stuff on social media because um, I heard it from somebody else and his name escapes me, but he called the people, the trolls, if you will, that are on Facebook and all the other social media platforms that leave negative comments. He called them cave people, which is an acronym for citizens against, against virtually everything. So we got to watch out for those cave people. Um, but you can see here, our ads got a lot of engagement. Um, the one thing that I am extremely fascinated by is that people found it so pertinent or they liked the content so much that they shared it. I personally can't remember a time that I shared an ad that I just saw in my Facebook feed to anyone or put it on my profile and attach my name to that basically. So to see that we got over 200 for the Kool-Aid video and about um, 80 for the local scapes video is, is amazing and fantastic because every time that somebody shares that it's free but free publicity for us. It goes out to their network and their friends or friends of friends can see that and, and engage with it. So that was a total win for us. So this is more people talking about water conservation. These are actual people sharing our content. And I just thought it was too funny. I had to throw a couple of them up here. Um, so people from HOA committees sharing the, the content with the people, um, people kind of complaining about watering too much and other people sharing. We actually, on the bottom there, that's a, a snapshot of an email we got just at our generic info at cuwcd.com email. He was actually from Idaho, and a friend of his, I guess, on Facebook had shared the video, um, and he saw it, and he just, he sent an email, and he said, I don't know why I'm getting any ads from Utah, but you ha you're making good content. I'm living in Idaho, and ha we have similar issues. Thank you guys for creating a unique advertising campaign. So we saw that people from Idaho, I remember specifically individuals from South Dakota sharing the content. It was a much wider reach than we ever anticipated. Um, and here's some more just snapshots from other entities and individuals sharing the content uh, that we shared, which was fantastic. Uh, our last goal was to increase website traffic by 10%. So this is comparing uh, on Google Analytics, the same time frame. So May 1st through June 30th, um, the blue line is 2022 and the orange line is 2021. And we had over 24.96% additional users and 26.43 new users on our website um, during that time. So our traffic increased there by over 10%. We were happy about that. And then the other place that we pointed people to for the local scapes video was localscapes.com. 
And we didn't quite get the result we were looking for, but we did see an increase of about four and 2% there. But it's hard to compete with that huge spike when there was over 3,000 people that hopped on local scapes in one day. So moving on, I just thought it would be fantastic to share with you guys some comment section gold, because I'm a comment reader. And I love to jump in the comments and see what people are hounding other individuals or companies for. So you can see a couple of funny conversations here. I've blocked out their names just in case they might be on this webinar. I thought that'd be nice. Um, but the one on the left that I really enjoy is you can see that there was an individual that posted on their same comment three times within a matter of minutes of one after the other. thought that was hilarious that they were either schizophrenic or talking to themselves. And then on the far right there, just some people with grammatical errors and people defending us, which is also a win um, on the bottom there saying that it's, we're not anti lawn but we have great guidance and we uh, can show you how to do it wisely. And some other funny ones here that you're more than welcome to take a look at. Um, I thought it was funny that people said to, to stop breeding, that that's the solution to our water problems. Um, and the funny one on the bottom there on the right, that it's uh, apparently the solution is that we have to take showers together like they did in the 70s and 80s. I wasn't alive then, so I don't know, um, but we could maybe bring that back. A lot of the styles coming back from the 70s and 80s. Um, so some final thoughts is we had a lot of fun with these videos. We had a lot of fun with the marketing. Um, we are in the works on making some new videos. We plan to have a pretty strong campaign next spring to push water conservation again. Um, so hopefully, maybe if this went well, we can come back and share the results with you guys on that campaign. We're really excited and have been planning for it for some months now, and we'll continue to, to plan and organize that. Um, we're extremely grateful to be in this uh, opportunity and share this stuff with you. Here's our, our contact information. Um, Rick's and mine and also QR codes to our social media platforms if you're wanting to follow us and see what we're doing there on those avenues but that's all I got yeah so and then just to to quickly um, I guess throw in some plugs so um, our programs are rapidly growing um, you know we had a 700 percent increase in uh, flip your strip applications um, we want to multiply that again by another thousand percent at least next year. I know that makes Zach nervous, but um, we did get some state funding. Um, there's some, uh, there's about five million dollars that the legislature appropriated for turf removal programs in the state, and we really want to take advantage of as much of that as possible. Uh, we do, we focused a lot on residential programs, but we also have programs for uh, commercial landscapes, um, institutional, your schools, your parks, um, changing those landscapes to, to something that's more water efficient, uh, more sustainable. Uh, the other thing that we're also working on is programs for HOAs. Uh, there's a lot of HOAs in, in Utah that uh, could use some help with their with their landscaping and, and making sure we can do as many ins we can incentivize as many people to change now before we start moving into more draconian needs and and restrictions uh, which uh, are uh, being talked about right now. But with that, I I think we're happy to answer questions. It looks like we've got plenty of time, and I think we'll stop sharing here so uh, we can jump in, but. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Zach and Rick, uh, for a wonderful marketing like uh, presentation on how we can achieve our goal through marketing means. And, and it, it was really new to me. So thank you for the nice presentation. And uh, to everyone watching, uh, please feel free to type your Q&As on Q&A session. Uh, and I will relay it to our presenters uh, who will then answer it. Um, so I got a question on chat by Matthew, uh, which says, I may have missed the metric, but how long did you run the marketing campaign for? Amazing video, by the way. Yeah, so this specific campaign, we ran for two months. Um, our irrigation technically gets turned on roughly April 15th every year. Um, so we, we did it from May 1st through June 30th. 
Uh, we thought that that was a good enough window for people to get exposed to the content, um, but also we didn't want it to go stale because we only had those two videos going. So we didn't want people to see it a plethora of times and get annoyed by it, if that makes sense. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Jack. And uh, the other question that we have on Q&A is, uh, gallon per capita per day does not subtract, subtract return flow. Does that mean indoor water use? Thanks. So uh, Hilary here wants to know like how the gallon per capita per day uh, is calculated. Yeah, so that, that's a really good question. So yeah, we do not separate indoor water that then is returned back to the system. So uh, in a lot of areas, we're calculate or we're uh, counting accounting for that water multiple times, right? So it goes through a, a water treatment plant, uh, a wastewater treatment plant back into a reservoir that then gets put back into a drinking water treatment plant and then used and consumed uh, or used again and, and or several times. And so, yeah, that, um, that water is not subtracted out uh, of our uh, gallons per capita per day. Thanks, Rick. Uh, the, the other one we have is from Marlene. Do you have any plans to help the Great Salt Lake, Lake from disappearing? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So um, yes, we have been working uh, through a lot of other joint projects and, and um, uh, joint agencies to make sure that we supply water to the Great Salt Lake. The other kind of with, you know, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but we also supply trans basin water. So we talked, I talk, mentioned that we use Colorado River water. Well, the water that gets put through homes, uh, specifically your, the drinking water through homes gets put back into the natural system and actually returns to the Great Salt Lake. So um, we do have water that we put in the Great Salt Lake that wouldn't naturally flow there um, so we do try to prop it up as much as we can, and we'll continue to evaluate ways that we can conserve water, use less, um, consume less water before it hits the Great Salt Lake, and then, of course, continue to put our reuse water in the Great Salt Lake as, as well. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. And of course, I, somewhere in the news, I was reading like bringing water from Pacific to Salt Lake, but I don't know where that is going. But anyway, dude. I think state, state has some plans. Mm, the next one is, uh, please show the ads QR again. Thank you. So will you mind sharing the QR one more time? Do, do you want just the YouTube one or you want, I'll show the one with all four. You, yeah, so the, uh, so the one that has everything on the last slide, I guess. And okay. Rhonda can like just scan with her phone. All right, let me see if I can get that pesky thing out of the way again. Sorry about that. No problem. Awesome. Yeah. 15 more seconds and we'll just stop this. Okay, I, I, I hope uh, she got it. The next one is, um, the next one is for Carmine. Uh, will you please share links to the program you have prepared for homeowners, uh, homeowners association, so HOAs? Um, yeah, so right now the, the program that we have available is called our Landscape Leadership Grant. And I'll have Zach uh, put the link in the chat box. Um, Probably later this year or early next year, we'll have um, the HOA specific program up and running. But right now, uh, our commercial program that includes all uh, HOAs, all uh, institutional buildings, commercial buildings, city buildings, uh, city landscapes um, is available there. And, and Zach just put that in the, uh, in the chat. Yep. So yeah, it's in the chat now. Uh, oh, let me let me put it up again. Copy and to everyone. Oh, okay. good. Yeah. So uh, that's the link. 
Um, and by the way, a lot of people in chat session are admiring your presentation and uh, they have comments like, well done, good job, uh, really nice presentation, great effort. So yeah, I think it, it's, it was a very nice presentation indeed. Uh, the next question we have is, do you have a leak alert program you work with? And if you do have leaks within your user, how do you approach that? Um, so we, right now, we don't have a, uh, like a water loss or a leak program available. Um, we have put money towards cities that would like to develop water loss or do training for leak detection. Um, we try to stay in the training realm for that one and hope that cities will, will fund those directly. But right now, our main focus is just outdoor landscaping, but we are trying to get more staff so that we can start to implement more programs. That's kind of the limiting factor right now for uh, implementing more, more things because there's a lot of state funding, there's a lot of federal funding available. It's more about trying to get the, the staff that we need so that we can uh, implement more programs. Awesome. Thank you. I, I, I don't see any, any more questions in the Q&A session. And since we, we have seven minutes left, um, I have a question for you guys, if you don't mind it. Uh, how, did you, how did you get your ad campaign on YouTube, Facebook going? Do you contact someone in the marketing? Or? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So um, I actually have a background in digital marketing. So that's what I graduated with a degree in. Um, and I, it's a funny story. I'll have to tell you sometime how I got here, but I switched from an agency, a uh, digital marketing agency to my current position here at, uh, central Utah water. And since I had the background, I already knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. So anybody and any, anybody and everybody that's interested, I had my contact information there. You're more than welcome to email me and I'd be happy to show you how it's very easy. Um, YouTube ads are done through Google ads and it's pretty user friendly. Facebook is the same. Um, basically, you just choose how long you want the campaign to run, how much money you're going to use, the area you're going to target and a few other factors here and there. Um, but yeah, because of my past experience, I was able to do it pretty quickly. <laughs> so that, does it also oh, go ahead? I was just going to say another thing to mention too with uh, the one of the benefits of using social ads and we didn't talk about this very much but you can hyper target individuals so for like the local scapes ads we could say well we really only want to show this video to people who maybe have searched uh landscaping or maybe diy or home improvement so we can select keywords that uh fit a person's profile mm -hmm. same thing with facebook people we only want to show it to people that are interested uh, we can also select a specific geographic location so we can say okay only people in salt lake city can see this video or only people where we want the rebates to uh, be taken advantage of can see this video if we're pointing them that direction so that's really nice. And the, the amount that you pay for for social advertising is, I mean, he set a budget of $10,000. Um, and if you were to set that same budget for radio or TV, uh, you would not even get one shown, one video shown. So it's just, it's so much more expensive to do uh, other forms of marketing. And in fact, you get a lot less impressions people don't watch ads on tv anymore <laughs> so you know we, we were really trying to focus on where are people today and where can we market to them um, you know we want people to take advantage of our programs we want people to know who the district is we want people to know where their water comes from because we also recognize that uh, if people are disassociated with their water supply, they're less likely to care about it. And so we want them to care about their water. We want them to know who to reach out to. And then ultimately we want them to make lifestyle changes, whether it's in their landscapes or just habit adjustments, uh, changing their smart controller, you know, all kinds of different things that they can do 
um, to ultimately get to that goal of uh, reduced per capita use or reduced use as a as a whole as a state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was my question. That was what I was going to ask, and you 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 answered it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't have any more questions, and since uh, we we do not have any more questions in Q and A neither in the chat. Um, I, I would like to thank you, Rick and Jack, uh, for your wonderful presentation. Again, anyone uh, who wants CE use for this uh, webinar, uh, Candice will be emailing you separately and after the, maybe later tonight or tomorrow. Um, and, and yep, uh, thanks, thanks. And, and thank you for joining in. I hope you learned something. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Yeah, thanks. And feel free to share the videos. Yep. If you guys see something that you enjoyed, feel free to share it. Yep. They're yeah. on they're on YouTube. If you if you didn't have a chance to scan them, you could just search Central Utah Water Conservancy District. It's a mouthful, but if you search it, it will pop up. Um, it's got all our videos there. Or you can do the same thing in Vimeo. If you go to Vimeo.com and search them there, you can also find them. So yeah, you can, yeah you do you can share this and of course we'll be we'll be publishing this webinar on the youtube so if you missed something you can go back to water well with sea well and and watch this uh, yep thank you thanks thanks, thanks.